after your students have found a good posture, it's time to let them experience holding the bassoon. Now, I like to think of it not so much as holding the bassoon as balancing the bassoon. And that's because if you've got it in a correct position, it's really just about balancing its weight against the strength of your left hand. And if you do it right, there's really very little weight that you're going to feel in the left hand. The way to start is to put the seat strap here all the way to the front of the chair. And make sure they're using a seat strap because a neck strap, which they might find in a case, puts a lot of weight on the neck and the left hand. It'll be very uncomfortable for them to begin with. So you've got your seat strap all the way to the front, feet about hip width apart on the floor. And it's really important that the feet are apart. If they're together, they're not going to be able to have the bassoon balance against the leg. It'll be much heavier. If your feet are apart, the leg will actually take a lot of the weight of the bassoon, which really helps when they're starting out. Now, have them put their left hand in front like they're going to shake hands with someone. Move it just to the center part of the body and they're going to contact the bassoon with this first large knuckle of the index finger. And where it's going to hit is just in line with that first tone hole. Have them put their hand here and then slowly lower it down to there and they should easily be able to get their index finger onto that tone hole. Now if everything is right, you should be able to let go and just balance it like this. No holding. You don't need to have your fingers on any keys over any holes. You can, in fact, just wiggle your fingers and your thumb around. Don't need to hold it. In fact, you can encourage them to bounce it a little bit, which they probably won't like. It's a little scary. But it's a good lesson that, you know, it's not going anywhere. The weight of the bassoon keeps it right here. And because it's on this knuckle and not on the fingers, you don't really feel the weight very much. The further forward the seat strap is, the less weight will be on the left hand. Now, this is a trade-off because I don't play like this, even though I always start students off this way. If you can see the angle of the vocal, if I have the bassoon forward like this, is coming down. For a more advanced student, I would say once your student's been playing for a while, is comfortable holding the bassoon, slowly have them start to bring the seat strap back a little farther. And this brings the instrument lower, brings the vocal up, and this has an effect on the pitch and the tone of the bassoon. You want to have it up, but the further back it is, the heavier it is in the left hand. So don't start with them back. Start with them really far forward. After you have the bassoon forward and you've got the left hand balanced, you can start to think about the right hand. The right hand doesn't do much in terms of holding the bassoon, it really just kind of sits there. And the easiest way to position the right hand correctly is to use a crutch or a hand rest. Not all bassoons have one and you don't have to use one. Many fine players don't and I've gone back and forth between it during my career. I use one now and I always try to start students with it if I have the option to do so. You want to position the crutch so that it keeps the hand far enough away so that the fingers can fall straight and a little bit curved in the right hand. The crutch is going to go right here between the thumb and the fingers in this fleshy kind of webbed area. So it goes right there and then the fingers just fall onto the tone holes and over the keys. Now, if you don't have a crutch, it's okay. I'll take mine out so you can see what to do if you don't have one. It's a little bit harder without a crutch, um, and they're a little more prone to try to hang onto the bassoon without it because they don't have anything to do with their hand. But you think of a point of contact, not on the knuckle, which was the case with the left hand, but in this fleshy area between the big knuckle and this first joint of the index finger, right here. There is a post here, and my bassoon has an extra key. You can ignore this key for now. It, it probably won't be on a student bassoon, but this is a C-sharp trill key, and you want them to anchor their finger to this post right here. So once you've got left hand, put the finger here between the knuckles, 
and then you'll sort of feel the weight hang on to this, this post. And then the fingers will curve more down. It's a slightly less ergonomically perfect position, but it works as well. If you have a bassoon that doesn't have a hand rest and it has the post for the hand rest, uh, well, number one, I would encourage you to get the hand rest. But if you don't have one or that's not an option, you might want to take this off because it can be irritating to the hand to have this on without a hand rest. I'm going to put mine back on because it just makes it a little easier. Now, once you've got them basically holding the instrument, it's time to talk about, well, where do your fingers go? The fingers go, of course, in the left hand just over the tone holes. And I usually tell students to think about keeping the fingers just above the tone holes as a rest position. On the keys, I tell them to rest their fingers right on top of the keys. So just like this. A common issue that you'll have, it's a byproduct of students feeling that they have to grab and hold the bassoon, is with the right thumb. You see the right thumb operates four keys down here, sometimes five if it's a fancier bassoon, but usually four. And what students will often do is they'll put their thumb up here so they have something to do with it and it's a way to hold on to the bassoon when they're not using their thumb to press down the key. This is bad because it, number one, creates tension in the hand because they're holding on to it. It also puts the thumb awfully far away from these keys that they need to operate. So you want to encourage them to not do this by having them rest their thumb on the B flat key. It should really hover above the keys, but until they're comfortable doing that, have them rest it right on top of here, and then they can easily move it down to where it needs to be. The left thumb should initially rest on top of the whisper key, but try to avoid having them hold this down all the time. The whisper key is the bottommost one, because the thumb on the bassoon, the left hand, is a very fluid digit that needs to be able to move around a lot. So have them keep it right around here to start with, and they'll be ready to start to think about the air and starting the first notes. 